Okay, so um, today um, I'm going to go over a uh, presentation I made with, with slides for a pullback trading strategy with uh, the Unbox Wave Wyckoff trading system. Um, the goal of this uh, presentation is to um, familiar <coughs> familiarize yourself with trading pullbacks and how to <coughs> identify uh, trading opportunities and uh, you know maximizing your chances for uh, profit and success. <coughs> so. Um, uh, the first slide we're here is uh, why trade pullbacks. Uh, pullbacks are great to trade if you can catch them because you're trading in the direction of the trend and um, as everyone's probably heard the trend is your friend. Um, the entries are clear you know you would enter after the uh, pullback. Um, the stops are easy you would place them below or above the pullback and as a result you would have minimal drawdown. Uh, sometimes pullbacks can be tricky so we're gonna go over the criteria uh, to use uh, to identify them. Um, we're gonna look at uh, eight examples from various platforms including Sierra Chart, NinjaTrader, TradeStation, and MetaTrader. <clears throat> so um, the criteria. Uh, so we're actually going to use uh, right here it's written required to detect the pullback. We're going to enable the uh, Three Stooges or the pullback algorithm. So we're going to use that in every chart. And then we're going to uh, use four or more of the following points of confirmation before entry. Now, this is important. So, we can enable the algorithm, but we also want to confirm uh, the strength of the pullback uh, for finding, you know, um, the highest probability trades. So, the the things uh, we're going to be looking at is, you know, supplier demand. Uh, you know, we, we want to see supplier demand coming in before um, entering on a pullback. You know, we're going to look at volume and, and delta volume. Then also uh, look for points of no supply, no demand. Um, you know, this is great. You know, you see supply come in and then you see an exhaustion in demand and, you know, that you know, um, tells the story that, you know, price is probably going to fall. So that's uh, another point we're going to be looking at. Then also effort, no result. Uh, this is looking at buy and selling in relation to price. For example, if there's a lot of, um, you know, buying, uh, but the price is not going up or a lot of selling, but the price is not going down, that's it's a case of effort and no result. Uh, that could tell you that there just isn't any supplier demand left at, at that price. Uh, also, climax selling and buying. Um, this is great if you're able to identify climax selling buying because these are points where um, our turnaround and usually indicate an end for an up or down move. Um, usually to identify a climax, uh, you need to look at a couple of the other points here. Um, and after some practice, it's, it's not that difficult to do. Also, we'll look at aggressive buying and selling. Uh, you know, which side is trying to move price. Um, then we'll also look at momentum in the direction of supply and demand. You know, cause the, because the momentum can you know, confirm and show supply or demand. And this is the speed of offers and bids coming in. Then also the trend. You know, this is strictly visual. You know, you look for a lower high, higher low. That's what we look for in a pullback. And support and resistance lines. Um, we'll actually use uh, 
the M auto floor ceiling indicator for this and uh, that will help identify areas where price bounces off from and you know finding where the top was or the bottom was next slide okay uh, the indicators that we're gonna use the only indicators we're using and all the indicators we're using are from the mbox wave system uh, we don't need any other indicators here um, for the best results we combined the wave based indicators with the period based indicators um, the wave based indicators will show supply and demand coming in as waves and the period based indicators will show supply and demand um, coming in over a period you know and other things like momentum and support and resistance lines so um, combining you know looking at waves and looking at periods and if they confirm each other um, that's very powerful so we want to use at least two indicators that plot below price and at least two indicators that plot on the price so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in and you know this will probably start to make more sense as we go through some chart analysis uh, next slide all right so here we're looking at uh, Sierra charts uh, chart here it's a thousand tick chart thousand trades per bar um, and gonna go through the criteria used for um, making a trade here uh, the uh, I'm using a three tick reversal wave setting uh, for the zigzag uh, the oscillator and bid ask oscillator it's a period of 10 and the inbox histogram is showing Delta volume I've also got the pullback algorithm enabled on the chart so um, I want to uh, point attention in this chart now um, you know in this area we've got the histogram showing consistent sustainable demand coming in with with these two boxes showing uh, significant ask volume and it's sustained after this box this one grows uh, more and the price also moves quite a bit uh, so we saw that demand came in right here uh, and as I mentioned before about climax usually you've got to look at some other points before you can determine it is a climax right and so this demand here we see that demand came in in a volume ask volume and in price movement uh, therefore we can look at this movement down and uh, conclude that this here was a climax and what's interesting about climaxes are that usually um, well here in this case the the uh, bids uh, taper off so there's less selling going on here and then suddenly boom so that's usually what a climax looks like you'll see like the volume tapering tapering off and then boom you know and usually what happens here this is a trap you know a, a, a short trap here and then right away the demand comes in uh, also in the mbit ask oscillator we see that um, at this point there's a gap between the buying and the selling and now there's you know aggressive buying uh, happening and so we see that there's demand we see the aggressive buying we can conclude this was a climax and then here we have a pullback buy signal and a uh, higher low uh, here we got another pullback and also higher low so if you get in on this position here you can actually you know add another position here and uh, you know the the next question is okay say we got in the trade you know how do we write it out where where do we get out 
um, you know, where's a safe place? Well, look at this. If we look at, you know, after the climax occurred here, you know, every box afterwards is is getting smaller and smaller, and so we see that, you know, uh, there's really not a whole lot of selling going on here. It's actually, you know, getting less and less and less and less as price is growing. Right? So price is growing here, and this is getting less. Um, let me see if I can. So right, so since this point, you know, price, you know, goes up like this, and the supply is less, 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 and less, and less. So as long as that's occurring, we know it's safe to be in the trade. Um, once we hit this point here, we see that the demand tapers off here, right? We see that some aggressive selling comes in here, and finally we see some supply come in here. So the goal is to, you know, get out in this area here. You know, once you see the demand um, weakening, we see the selling coming in, and we see some supply coming in. So, you know, we're going to be looking to, you know, to get out somewhere in this area. And it's, it's, it's as simple as that. All right, let's go to the um, next slide. All right, so here we're looking at the E-mini SMP uh, 2000 tick chart in NinjaTrader. Um, I've got um, several indicators uh, loaded. And uh, I've got a, for the zigzag, I've got a three wave tick reversal. And here for the algorithm, we're using the three stooges. And the three stooges is good at showing, you know, when um, supply is, uh, is weakening or demand is weakening. Um, and, you know, they often occur on pullbacks as well. So uh, in this setup, we are looking at um, this case where price was growing here, you know, and we had some decent buy signals here. Uh, we had a sell signal here, but we cannot confirm any supply here. So that signal would be ignored. So that's what you want to make sure is the signals are there for you to pay attention to, but you need to confirm uh, four, or mo four or more of these points. Uh, as on this page, we need, you know, four or more of the following points of confirmation before entry. So going back to this slide and, you know, somebody says, okay, here's a, here's a sell signal, but uh, we can't confirm supply here. So it's not even, we're not, we're not going to look at it. All right, so what happens here? We hit a top. Uh, these lines, the green lines, horizontal lines are ceiling lines. Uh, the red ones are floor lines. That's uh, being drawn by the M auto floor ceiling. And this indicator is pretty good at finding the tops and the bottoms. Um, and it did find the top here, and, and these lines, you know, serve as, you know, support resistance lines, you know, breakout lines, breakdown lines, that sort of thing. And, you know, and you can see, you know, uh, a line was drawn here and it, and it, and here, and it came and it popped uh, after this support, went up here and then came back to this level. This line was also support. We broke through here, made made the top and we're fa we're failing to make any new highs here price begins to fall we see at the same time the demand here is exhausted it literally goes to nothing uh, the selling grows and we see the aggressive selling so and that begins here this this gap 
so this is our sign of supply and and in this histogram we also see supply growing this is our sign of supply large gap between the selling and the buying uh, we see the three stooges sell signal right here this is the second lower high this is the top this is the first lower high second lower high the ceiling finds the top and we begin to fall fall down uh, below the ceiling lines uh, so we found you know five points here of confirmation for making a trade after uh, we see all this um, and price comes back down here this is actually where we would enter short right here as price breaks down after this pullback um, and then what happens price falls down price falls down price falls down here we've got this buy signal but again we don't see demand here we still see aggressive selling we don't see demand so this does not fulfill uh, the the points of confirmation so that's not something we would be looking at we come down come down come down the floor line finds the bottom here we see that supply begins to taper off we see this the boxes less and less and less supply uh, we also see a shortening of the thrust which means for example from this point to this point that's decent downward progress but from this point to this point that's not much downward progress and at this point here in the oscillator we begin to see that the aggressive selling begins to fail right here and price actually moves up against the selling so that's a divergence so I mean definitely if, if we didn't exit here by the time price comes up here and you, you see this and we've seen this we'd want to get out uh, okay so this is the next slide we're looking at the the euro and actually in this chart we've got um, the analysis as price is coming down and the analysis as price is going up so we've got two trades here and in this chart we're looking at the momentum the M pace indicator right here so we, we've swapped out the oscillator with the with the momentum so this is what I was talking about before we want to use at least two indicators below the chart and two indicators or more on the chart so in this case we've got the M box histogram showing delta volume we've got M pace showing momentum we've got you know the three stooges algorithm we've got the wave um, zigzag we've got the auto floor ceiling for the support resistance lines and we've got these boxes to show the price movement so that's what I meant when we want to use you know a minimum of of two here and two here but here I have uh, three all right so um, you know we can see that the momentum and the momentum uh, works pretty well on say time charts so we're looking at a one minute chart here and um, you know we see that the selling momentum is dominating dominating here and while this histogram here is not indicative of supply it is showing no demand the momentum in M pace actually shows the sign of supply in this case so you want to um, you know keep that in mind that you know sometimes you know um, sometimes you won't clearly see the supplier demand in one of the histograms but one of the other indicators can show it so these actually confirm each other you know the this selling momentum is dominating this is our sign of supply and and in this histogram is actually showing no demand so that's that's perfect uh, 
Here we've got the ceiling lines. This, the ceiling line finds the top. It did find the top. Um, and then we come down, right? And we come down, and what I like to look at as well is we came down so easily. And, and in fact, uh, this is a red box here above the zero line, which means in this box there was more ask volume more offers than bids which is interesting um, because this is uh, a clue that this was at this point a long trap and so price came crashing down with almost no effort on the sellers almost no effort on the bids here price came crashing down and so when this happens right when this happens when the bids do start to hit, uh, since we wasted almost no effort here, this is the opposite of effort and no result. This is the case of effort of little effort and great result. So when the bids start come uh, come in, uh, we expect further price decline. Uh, so at this pullback we have the three stooges sell and a lower high we've got another three stooges sell and a lower high and we've got another three stooges sell and a lower high at which this point the bids came in so I love this kind of setup because price came crashing down with almost no effort here so when the effort comes, which is right here, the bid volume, uh, we expect further price decline. Bam, this is, this is practically a freebie right here. Right here, this is a freebie. Uh, very, very, very low risk trade did this kind of setup. I love this kind of setup. All right, so uh, now we're coming down here. Um, this floor line finds the bottom right so we want to think about where are we going to exit right um, certainly we don't want to give money back um, so we want to find an exit point that makes sense you know before we before the price grows here and you know if you can see uh, this box here and this bid volume there's more of it more bid volume here than here and this box is smaller than this box in both length and width. I pay attention to these things. So there was more bid volume exerted here than here and less result. So this is your case of effort, no result. Well, there was a result, just a small result. You know, so this shows that the move is beginning to slow down. Right? The move is beginning to slow down. So, you know, we can exit here if we miss this exit um, the next bar pops up we have a floor line and we see that the buying momentum comes in here uh, we definitely would exit at this point then alright so when we see that a change in behavior occurs that's where we want to exit um, and in this chart um, after you know we find the bottom and price reverses we actually get into a setup that uh, presents a um, a long long trade um, and um, you know so we're gonna make the case for that look at this we've got the demand here demand came in see this red box above zero that means more ask volume this is actually a buy and balance positive delta volume on a down wave okay so we see that um, the offers have flooded in so we see the demand here this is demand 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 this is the response right here no supply this price came up here no supply price was unable to move um, substantially down.
So one is the demand and no supply. Two, buying momentum is dominating right here. Yes, this is lower than, say, these red bars here, but in this area, it is still dominating. So you need, um, it's good to keep that in mind that, you know, um, what is dominating since sometimes things will be you know higher like here and here it's lower but the buying is still dominating that's our second point third point we found the bottom so this floor line did find the bottom so that lets us know okay you know this probably is a point that it's not gonna come back to uh, we've seen this buy imbalance, right? So we have more buying on this down wave. Five, these waves show no supply. Minus 72, minus 29, minus 7, no supply. Just like the histogram shows no supply, these numbers show no supply. Um, we've got the three stooges buy, this pound sign. And we've got, you know, higher low. You know, we've had a higher low here, higher low here, higher low here. It's a third higher low. Uh, very low risk trade. Uh, we would want to take it. Uh, you take it, you write it out, and then you see as price is, you know, fidgeting, fidgeting around this area, um, you know, this ceiling line. You know, ceiling lines are also good, or floor lines are also good areas to take profits. You know, when we see we come up to this price level and we're kind of fiddling here, not much demand, not much supply, you know, and after we're kind of ranging here, I would just get out at this point. Yeah, price did go up here. This looks like maybe uh, climactic, you know, because we didn't have we didn't have any demand here and suddenly it shoots up. Um, most likely, you know, price will... Uh, there will be a correction here. So, you know, if if we're ranging for a while like we are here, and I don't see, you know, renewal of, of demand, I know there's really no supply here, so it doesn't mean price will go down, but I will exit around this area, around this ceiling line, and then see if I can get back in if the uh, opportunity presents itself. itself and the uh, conditions line up. Um, we've got this sell signal here, but why would we not take it? Well, we don't see any supply, no supply. We see demand came in, no supply. Buying momentum dominating, we would not take this signal as a sell. Okay, next slide. All right, so this is NASDAQ, uh, one minute chart. Again, we're using the momentum. And, um, you know, we're going to look at the, uh, the trade to take here. The story, we're always looking for the story in a chart. And the chart has to tell a story. If, if you cannot find the story in the chart, do not place a trade do not um, once you begin to look for the stories in the chart um, and after you practice it for a while you'll become like second nature you'll look at a chart and say okay this makes sense or that doesn't make sense and if a chart you can't make sense out of a chart you don't trade it if you can't make sense out of a chart um, change your uh, change your chart to a different instrument or change the uh, time frame you know go from one minute to uh, a tick chart you know or a volume chart uh, that's what I always do if I can't make sense out of the chart I change the chart until I can make sense out of it or if I can't make sense out of it and it's a you know uh, not a great trading day for that instrument and it's ranging I just just go to something else um, and you'll f always find something else. So that's the main thing. You want to trade setups that look good. If it doesn't look good, 
If it doesn't look as good as these charts that I'm showing you, don't trade it. All right, so we see here the price came down. The floor found the bottom here, which is good. Um, we see the demand is growing, okay? Histogram is showing uh, that demand is growing. After this floor, we see no supply at all. Look at this. It's just abysmal. There's nothing. There's no supply. So demand is growing. No supply here. Absolutely no supply. Okay. Buying momentum comes in. is dominating. So by the time we get to this pullback, we've seen demand. We've seen no supply. We've seen the buying momentum come in. So here we have a pullback buy, we have a higher low, and we've got a nice bounce off the floor here. We've got six points of confirmation. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a very strong trade. And you know, there are some things, for example, you know, uh, if you look at these numbers, you know, um, you know, after the supply hit minus 43, then we got a plus four. So there's no selling here, minus six, that's very weak. Minus 27, minus 18, so not much, not much selling. Here we got 77 plus 79. So I mean, I didn't write this down here as 0.7, but you know, this minus 18, you can make as a point, point 0.7 as well, you know. Uh, so we get in and then, um, you know, here's another pullback, and you know, uh, this is this is great for an add-on position. You know, um, you know, so you know, if a trade looks good and uh, you see an opportunity for re-entry, you can you can add on to the position. Um, I do that all the time. That's where that's how you can really make the money. You know, if you play some bad trades. Um, you know, uh, that's okay. You get out as soon as you can. And then when you place a good trade, you know, don't be afraid to add money into it. That's how, you know, you're going to make, you know, make the money from the trades. You know, a lot of people uh, will, you know, write out losing trades to uh, very high losses and then winning trades, they're afraid to, to add on to the position. Um, it's psychological, but uh, you know it's it's very beneficial to 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 do add-on positions. So, say we got in this trade, we added on this trade. Now, where where do we get out? Well, as we hit this ceiling line, we see that the demand tapers off. Um, we don't see any supply here, so it doesn't mean that suddenly price is going to fall, but it doesn't mean that um, you know we're not sure because you know the the, the demand is not uh, you know the, the price isn't moving significantly up here we could stay in the trade but you know this is a safe exit this is a safe exit point and you know if we see a case where price will start to grow and we can make several confirmations we can get back in and that's fine you know uh, at this point, it doesn't look like price is going to fall. You know, we've got a plus three, plus eight, minus fifteen, and you know, we've got still got demand here. Um, but you know, this is a safe, safe exit. You know, we begin to range around the ceiling line, and you know, if we got in here and put an add on here, you know, that's pretty good, pretty good profit. Um, so. Let's move on. All right, uh, now we reach uh, the TradeStation platform, and a lot of people like to use TradeStation for, uh, for stocks. And, uh, you know, on TradeStation, you can trade stocks intraday or long term. So I put up a couple charts for, uh, you know, long term daily analysis on. Trade station and to show you know that it works as well. 
So this is Google, and um, you know we're looking at getting in on this this uptrend. You know, um, I guess let's just let's just dig right in. Uh, the histogram shows that the supply is exhausted. The histogram shows that the demand is growing. I, I love when I can see this. I love it when I can see, you know, demand is growing, supply exhausted. Or the inverse, supply is growing, demand is exhausted. Um, those are always great criteria to look at. In this case, instead of the uh, oscillator or the momentum, we're looking at the cumulative delta here, which is a period-based indicator. Use a period of 20 here to look at you know the ask volume minus the bid volume and when I talked about using the wave indicators in conjunction with the period indicators it is because they add confirmation uh, to the analysis right here we see the supply exhausted we see the demand growing but we see this as boxes which are, are, are waves as boxes here we see it as a period to transition from selling to buying so this you know one two and three they totally totally confirm each other totally confirm each other which is great um, right here at this point we've got a three stooges buy signal plus 63 and a down wave there's more buying happening on this down wave so there are some people that know something that other people don't. There's a lot of a lot of people stacking up on buy positions here. Could be insider trading. And in this case we can see it. Uh we see so the plus sixty three on the down wave, no supply. It's also a buy imbalance. We've got the three stooges buy, we've got higher low, yeah. Got the higher low bounce off floor line here. It's great, um, you know. Great position you would you would enter after you know this pullback completes and we start to break up. So around this bar, that's that's when you would enter. Um, and uh, in this case, so I'm using a. Uh, uh, a $20 wave reversal. So in that $20 wave reversal on this candle, that's when we would, on this candle, that's when we would enter position. You know, stock up on some stock. And, uh, you know, we get in and, and write it out. Um, you know, I mean, we hit some kind of top here. And if you look at this uh, histogram here, see a lot of buying but look at that box compared to this and this we spend a lot more ask volume and the up box is not not that big in length so there's a correction here so you know this is a good place to um, you know to get out you know if you bought some some stock some stock options here around here and got out here make a nice profit on this chart we also had some buy signals here so if you were aggressive you could get in here but um, you know there would be less points of confirmation all right next chart Netflix 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 all right so here we're using a pullback algorithm and here we've got a classic case of effort and no result. And let's just let's just jump right into it. Look at this histogram. We've got all this selling, all this selling. And look, where is price at the end? It didn't come down. From here to here, it didn't really come down. It came down here, but it popped right back up. And look at all the selling and price is not going down 
I mean, if you can find cases of effort and no result, these are very, very strong. It means that, you know, after this point, price simply cannot go down because it tried to go down and um, it's not able to. Uh, the cumulative delta shows here selling is exhausted and we're transitioning to buying at this point. Um, we see here in the histogram after the effort and no result we see no supply at all. In the histogram here we see demand is growing and the pullback signal occurs. Right? It's a third higher low and a bounce off the floor which excess support. Great position to get in. You know, get some get some stock options at this point. I mean, we've got the effort and no result, no supply, selling exhausted, demand growing. We've got the pullback, third higher low. Get some stock options at this point. <laughs> That's all I could say. And um, how do we know where to get out? You know. One thing I'm always doing is comparing boxes and their and their delta volume. You know, we've got two up boxes here consecutively, and this up box we've got this much. This up box we have significantly less. But we don't know whether to get out yet. You know. Um, you know, if you're aggressive, you'd get out, but I, w I don't even know if I would get out at this point. Supply comes in here, right? And you'd probably then you think, you know, oh shoot, price is coming down. I I gotta get out. Well, um, you know, usually uh, there's a good chance that uh, since we didn't find a ceiling line here, good chance that there could be a correction. So, um, you know, as you can see, the demand at this point has diminished at this point, and we find another ceiling line. We also see that in this Cuto Delta at this point, at this point, right, this candle, it has dropped significantly, Cuto Delta. So I pay attention to things like this, and this is, uh, would be uh, the point, you know, my gut is telling me to get out. But if you missed, missed getting out here, you definitely want to get out somewhere in this area. Uh, certainly if you write it out until this ceiling line and you see that the demand has diminished. Um, you know, but that being said, if you got some stock options here and got out somewhere in this area, you'd be sitting pretty. And what's interesting after the price collapses and it collapses through a few ceiling lines, that's a good indication, you know, price is coming down, it begins to collapse through the lines that it's formed. Look at this, we've got climactic buying here. Look at this, it's like a resurrection bar. And, um, and then it comes back down. So remember we saw a case of, um, you know, demand, or we saw a case of uh, supply diminishing in slide four, okay, yeah. Uh, we saw in the crude oil thousand trades, we see the supply diminishing, then we see a climax, bam. Okay, we go back to, to this slide. Similar, we see demand diminishing, then we see a climax, and we see a fall. So um, it's good to pay attention to things like that. Um, let's go to the next slide. Ah, Forex. So this is the uh, MetaTrader 4 platform. We're looking at the Euro USD five minute chart. And um, I'm using a um, I'm using a five pip wave reversal here. And uh, so let's just jump right in. Um, Supply comes in on the down wave. It does. 
you know, because uh, that's a significant uh, amount of supply here. Um, we see that the cumulative delta at this double top shows no demand. So we made a top here, here made a second top. Um, so here we had demand, here no demand, right here, right here no demand. And this confirms that the supply came in here, there's no demand. The M-Pace momentum shows selling is dominating in this area, it does. It does show that it's dominating. We've got a three stooges cell here, we bounce off the ceiling here. Um, and look, we've got a decrease in delta. Shows demands getting exhausted. Look, 1955, 986, 517. I pay attention to things like this. You know, when you see that steadily supplier demand is decreasing, it's running out of juice. So as as price breaks down after this. Uh, um, this point after this pullback um, we want to get in we would get in and write it out where would we write it out well here it's a little more tricky but one thing that I always keep in mind is previous levels of support or resistance and I've drawn this in an orange line this was a previous level uh, of notable support so as we come down and reach this level of support previously, I would look at the indicators to see if perhaps it's time to get out. You know, And as we can see, the momentum here, huge momentum bar on this candle. It significantly drops on this bar. And on this bar, again, another significant drop. So the momentum goes from, from here to here in a matter of a couple of these bars and look at the contraction of this candle along with knowing that this was a previous level of support I'd get out and if you don't get out at this point you know when it forms this floor line and you see this large uh, green momentum bar uh, you'd see that there's a change in behavior and you definitely get out at that point um, takes a little practice, you know, seeing these things, but, you know, after you do it for a while, you do get a hang of it. Uh, next, next chart. Uh, here's the uh, British pound and the Swiss franc. Um, I've got also here a 5 pip wave reversal. Um, and... Um, you know, let's jump into it. Uh, wh why does this part of the chart look much cleaner and better than this chart? Well, this was before the European markets opened, so price was kind of ranging here. You know, when you're day trading, you want to trade during the uh, volatile times, or you know, when you have uh, maximum chances of nice up up swings and down swings and up moves, down moves. So anyway, after the euro markets open, so we see some of this action here. Um, we see this pullback. So what occurs before that? Before that pullback, we see that supply is growing. Supply begins to get in here. Maybe this looks like initially like a climax, but you know, we look at other points before we come to conclusions and we don't really do anything right here but we do see that supply is growing so at this point since we see supply is growing this is not a climax this is the initial supply coming in and it confirms after we see supply growing we see that this confirms the initial supply and this is where probably the operators get in you know, the big money the smart money starts to get in probably around here at the same time, we see demand falls and price falls here. Demand falls and price falls. And that's this box. And by the time we get here, we're here. 
um, confirmation of supply. If the commuter delta shows supply. But at this point, we wouldn't want to get in here, and, and this is a very scary candle with a long wick. So, I mean, we saw supply, we see demand falls, we see confirmation of supply, but we don't take the trade just yet. We didn't get our pullback. We did not get our pullback. And this comes in here, and this is a wicked candle. That is to uh, trap, trap all the longs it can. And this, uh, this sometimes happens. And actually, we, we use it to our advantage because in the histogram, we see a red box above the zero line. So there's a lot of effort, a lot of buying volume and still price came back down here. So this is an effort and no result. A lot of effort, no result. That's beautiful. This is turning into absolutely gorgeous setup. We hit here, and this is our first pullback. This is our first pullback. Um, the ceiling acts as a strong level of resistance. We found the top here. Another ceiling line acts as low resistance. We've got a lower high, you know, from here to here to here as the second lower high. It's a beautiful setup uh, because when you can combine, you know, growing supply, demand exhaustion, and a case of effort and no result, it's beautiful, beautiful setup. Um, you know, when we can confirm a signal with, with this sort of criteria. Price comes crashing down, bam, we've got a pullback here, we've got an opportunity for an add-on position. I'll write it down here, we see that throughout the down move here, demand is weak, demand is weak. Price is coming down. Around this area, we see that supply diminishes here. Price starts to come up, but supply begins to diminish here. And we can see it in the uh, cumulative delta. So around here, we'd want to exit, you know. And, um, you know, things that I look for, for example, is Okay, here's a floor line, here's a floor line. We broke through, we broke through, we broke through, we broke through, but now we're coming back up. Coming back up to this line and then up to the previous line. See, we didn't see that here. Once we broke through, we didn't come back to it. Once we broke through, we didn't come back here. We broke here, broke here, now we're starting to come back to them. I look at that. So that you know, there's potential for price reversing, and we see supply diminishing in the histogram, uh, in the boxes, and the cumulative delta. So I'd get out here. And this pullback, I would not trade it because we see that supply is diminishing. I would not trade that pullback. Uh, this pullback here, you know, this is during not a very liquid time, and, you know, the the histogram the boxes do not show a case of of demand uh, by the time we get here yes we had demand but at this point we can't make a strong argument for demand so I mean this is not that wouldn't look at that either again we're looking for you know maximum points of confirmation and to find a story in the chart that makes sense if it makes sense uh, then those are the trades we want to take. If it makes like 50% sense, but you're not sure, don't take it. Okay, so next, next slide. Uh, so the summary of um, this presentation, you know, the more confirmations you have, the stronger the setup. Um, you know, we want to look, you know, for, you know, five points, six points, seven points of confirmation using various indicators. Um, 
it's very strong when you know the wave indicators agree with the period based indicators you know because the wave indicators look at waves the periods look at a period and if they agree with each other um, that's very powerful you know um, you know we uh, combine supply and demand with exhaustion effort and no result climaxes momentum trend and support and resistance lines for maximum probability so basically you know you want to look at a chart and you want to see that it makes sense if it makes sense make the trade if it doesn't don't you know over time and after you practice you'll grow um, an intuition uh, for you know taking trades uh, where to enter where to exit and um, you know it will become more natural so this uh, brings an end to the presentation um, uh, good luck and uh, for more information you can please visit mboxwave.com uh, thanks for watching the presentation goodbye